live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Hello, welcome back to The Sands here. We are live here in Las Vegas along with Justin Warren. I'm John Walls, you're watching theCUBE and our coverage here of AWS reInvent 2019. Day one, off and rolling. Andy Jassy on the keynote stage this morning for a couple of hours, and now a jam-packed show floor. Chris Wright joins us, the CTO at Red Hat, waking his way toward CUBE Hall of Fame status. You're not there yet, <laughs> we're getting there. This is probably like your 50th guy. appearance, I think. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. But yeah, always a pleasure. Um, First off, let's just, let's just talk about kind of the, the broad landscape right now. Uh, the pace of innovation that's going on and what's happening in the open cloud. Um, you know, catching up to that acceleration, if you're, a, if you're a legacy enterprise, you know, you got all these guys that are born over here and they're moving at warp speed. You gotta yeah. be, you've got to play catch up and, and talk about maybe that friction, if you will, and, and what sure. people are, are learning about that in terms of trying to get caught up to the folks that have the head start. Well, I think uh, number one, the way I like to frame it is, open source is the source of innovation for the industry. And part of that is, you look at the collaborative model, bringing different people together across industry to build technology together, it's hard to compete with that pace and speed. The challenge, of course, is as you described, how do you, how do you consume that? How do you bring it into the enterprise, which is, you know, got a whole business that's running off of infrastructure that has been sustaining their business for potentially decades. So there's that, impedance mismatch of needing to go quickly to, to keep abreast of, of the technology changes uh, while honoring the fact that your core business is running already on, on key technology. So I think looking at how you bring platforms in that support the newer technologies as well as create connections or even support uh, existing applications is a great way uh, to kind of bridge that gap. And then partnering with people who can build uh, a bridge, like an impedance uh, match between your speed and the speed of innovation is, is a great way to kind of you know, harness the power without exposing yourself to the ragged edges as much. Sure, sure. Yeah, to talk to us a bit more about, about enterprise experience with open source. I mean, Red Hat has a long heritage of, of providing open source to enterprise and pretty much sits out as a unique example of how you make money with open source. So enterprises have lots of open source that they are using every day now. You know, Linux has come into the enterprise left, right, and center. But there's a lot more open source technologies that enterprises are using today. So give us a bit of a flavor of how enterprises are, are coming to grips with how open source helps sustain their business. Well, in one sense, it's that innovation engine. So it's bringing new technology in. In another sense, it's uh, what we've experienced in the, in the Linux space is it was driving a kind of commoditization of infrastructure. So switching away from the traditional vertically integrated stack of a risk Unix environment to uh, providing choice. So you have a common platform that you can target all your applications to that creates independence from the underlying hardware, that's, that's something that provided real value to the enterprise. That notion continues to play out today as infrastructure changes. It's not just hardware, it's virtualized data centers, it's public clouds. How do you create that consistency for developers to target their applications to, as well as the operations teams to manage? Uh, well, you know, it's through leveraging open source and bringing a common platform in, into your environment. As you go up the stack, I think you get more and more proliferation of ideas and choices from developer tools and modules and dependencies. You know, most software stacks today have some open source uh, even included inside, whether you're building exclusively on top of a platform that's open source based, um, you're probably also including open source into your application. So it's a whole variety from building your key infrastructure to supporting uh, your, your enter enterprise applications. Yeah, you, you mentioned openness, which I know is a, a big, a very important thing to, to Red Hat, and uh, one thing that Red Hat's been speaking of lately is open hybrid cloud. So maybe you can explain that to us, uh, what, what is open hybrid cloud? What, what does Red Hat mean by that? Sure, so open hybrid cloud for us, uh, start with open, that's, our platforms are built from open source projects, so we, work across uh, like literally thousands of open source projects, bring those together into products that build our platform. Uh, also, we create an open ecosystem. So, you know, we're really fostering partnerships and collaboration at, at every level, from the developer level up through our commercial partnerships. Uh, the hybrid piece is talking about where you deploy this infrastructure. Inside your data center, uh, 
on bare metal servers inside your data center virtualized in a private cloud across multiple public clouds and increasingly out to the edge. So that, that notion of what is the data center uh, to, to me really encompasses all those different footprints. So the hybrid cloud, cloud meaning give a cloud-like experience from an operations point of view, simple to operate, meaning uh, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can to help operators manage that infrastructure. From a developer point of view, servicing functionality as services and APIs. And you know, how do you give a self-service environment to, to developers, like, you know, like a, a cloud? So it's across all that. Just you talk about data and the edge, uh, which you know, the fact that there's so much the computing that's going on out there and, and staying closer to the source, right? We're not bringing it back in, you're leaving it out there. That adds a whole new level of complexity too, I would think, um, and scale. Yes. You know, are you massive amounts, of IOT, what everything is happening out there. <laughs> so what are you seeing in that in that in terms of handling that complexity and addressing challenges that you see coming as this growth, this tremendous growth continues? Well, one, it's how do you manage all of that infrastructure? So I think having some consistency is, is a great way to manage that. So using the same platform across all of those different environments, including the edge. That's really going to give you a direct benefit. Two, targeting your applications to that same common platform, having the ability to recognize some dependencies. So maybe you have a dependency on a data set and that data set's supplied from sources that are in an edge location. So we can codify that and then enable developers to build applications, you know, do test dev prod across a variety of uh, environments, pushing all the way out to an edge deployment where you know, thinking you're taking in a lot of data you may be building models in a scale-out environment internally in your private cloud or out in the public cloud, taking those models, deploying those to the edge for inference in real time to make real-time decisions based on data flows through the system. I mean, that's, that's the, the world that we live in today. So managing that complexity is critical. Automation for uh, managing that, consistency, common platforms I think are, are key tools that we can use to to help build up that, that rich infrastructure. And just from an industry perspective, I mean, so who does who is that applied to in your mind? Right? What kind of industry is looking at this and saying, all right, this is this is a uh, uh, an opportunity, but also a challenge for us and something we really need to address. What's the array there, you think? Uh, honestly, I see it across almost all market verticals. So we look at the world or a platform-centric view from, from a red hat perspective. So we look at the world across industries. Uh, what I find interesting in the edge use cases is they tend to get more vertically specific. So in a manufacturing case, you know, maybe you're dealing with a manufacturing line which is a set of applications and a set of devices which looks quite different from a retail office or branch office environment. Some similar problems but very different environments. And then you take uh, the service provider's networks, the telco network out of the edge, and that looks quite different from a manufacturing floor, so you know it's a it's a wide variety of vertically oriented solutions, drawing from some common platform technologies, containers, Linux. You know how do you do automation across all of those environments? That uh, machine learning tools. Those are the things that I think are consistent, but you get all, a lot of very, very vertically focused use cases. Yeah, so I know in the keynote today that uh, that Andy was mentioning that, that they love open source, and uh, when we're here at Amazon, and, and he, he likes to talk about the compatibility of that, and customer choice is also very important to Amazon. But tell us a little bit about how openness interacts with somewhere like AWS. I mean, we're, we're here at, at reInvent, which is an AWS show. So how does Red Hat and AWS work together? How do, how do you coexist in this ecosystem and get the benefits of open source technologies? We coexist in a number of different ways. One would be as engineers working together in open source communities building technology. Uh, another is we have commercial partnerships, so we run our platforms on top of uh, AWS. So we bring customers uh, to AWS, which is a shared, you know, we have a shared benefit there. Uh, and then there's also areas where we have competitive offerings. So it's, you know, it's a full spectrum, kind of the, the modern world of the buzzword coopetition or, or whatever, you know, it, I really think when you look in the open source communities, engineers thrive on building great technology together, independent of any kind of corporate boundaries. Commercially, uh, people develop relationships that are complicated today, and we have a great working relationship. We run a lot of our uh, cloud customers on Amazon, uh, but again, there's there's areas where. We're both invested in Kubernetes, ours is OpenShift, 
there's a ZKS, so customers have a choice in that context. Yeah, so in that, in that context, uh, there are some in the open source community who view cloud as, as possibly a bit of a villain uh, in certain things. We've, we've seen some, uh, some dynamics around some particular providers around the, d the database space. I won't, I won't name partic particular right. players, but we, we've seen some competitive moves in, in that space. So do, do you see cloud as, is, is, is it the villain or is it an enabler of, of open source technologies? Well, it's definitely an enabler. Uh, now there's a complicated scenario in this, like is it a villain, which is, how do we create sustainable communities? And in the context where a technology is developed largely by one vendor, and it's monetized largely by another vendor, that's not going to be a very sustainable model. So we just have to focus on how are we building technology together and building it in a sustainable way. And part of that is making the contributions back into the community to help the projects themselves grow and thrive. Part of it is having a great diversity of contributors into the, into the project. And recognizing that business models change and you know the world evolves. Yeah, uh, that does introduce an element of risk that's been around for a while, that, that enterprises are a little bit concerned about open source. Oh, well, who's, who's really behind this? Will this project or software still be here in six months? That seems to be decreasing as, as the commercial support for particular open source projects and initiatives uh, come to bear. And we've, we see the rise of foundations and so on that try to give a little bit of an underpinning to some of these projects, particularly ones that are, are critical for the support of, of uh, enterprise technologies. Um, do, do you see enterprises maturing in their view of open source? Do they, do they see it as, no, no, the, we understand that this is definitely a sustainable technology, whereas this other one's like, yeah, that, that one's not quite there yet? Or do they still need a lot of assistance in making that kind of decision? I've been at it for a couple of decades. So in the beginning, there was a lot of evangelism that this is safe, it's consumable by the enterprise, it's not some kind of crazy idea to bring open source, you're, you're not going to lose your intellectual property or things like that. Those days, I mean, I, I'm sure you could find an exception, but those days are largely over in, this, in the sense that open source has gone mainstream, so I would say open source is one. Most large enterprises have an open source strategy. They consider open source as critical to not only how they source software from vendors, but also how they build their own applications. So the world has really, really evolved and now it's really a question of uh, where are you partnering with vendors to build infrastructure that's critical to your business but not your differentiator? And where are you leveraging open source uh, internally for your, to differentiate your business? And I think that, you know, that's a more sophisticated view. It's not the safety question. It's not is it, a, is it legally, uh, you know, you're bringing legal concerns into the picture. It's really a much different conversation and people in the enterprise are looking, how can we contribute to these projects? So hmm. that's really, it's pretty exciting actually. So, so what do you think it is in, in the maturation process then? Is it, uh, is it in the adolescent years? Is it growing into young adulthood? Uh, you said <laughs> you've been at it for a long time and it's more acceptable. But where are we, you think, in that, in that arc? You know, with, uh, in terms of uh, adapting or, or adopting, if you will, that philosophy? probably depends on where you are in the layer of the stack. Uh, and so the lower you get into the infrastructure, the more commonplace it is. The closer you get to uh, differentiated value and something that's really unique, uh, there's less reason to even build those applications as open source if it's only you consuming it. You're the only one, right. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty broad spectrum there. Uh, I think that in general, we're in some level of, of adulthood. It's a very mature world in the open source communities. and What's interesting today is how we change uh, business models around deploying and consuming open source technologies, and then a next generation of technology will be very data-centric. Uh, data drives a whole set of questions. There's policy and governance around data placement. There's model training and model exchanging, and where models come from data. Are the models open source? Is the data shareable? You know, that it sets a whole new wave of questions that I think in that context, it's much earlier. So that's our next interview, by the <laughs> way, with Chris. Uh, next time down the road. Thanks for the time. Uh, okay, as always, really good to see you. And I know yeah. you're, uh, you're awfully busy this week, so we really do appreciate you carving out a little slice of time I for us here on theCUBE. I always Glad to do it. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank Chris you. Wright, over Red Hat CTO, back with Justin and John, live on theCUBE here at AWS reInvent 2019.